Well, here we have the leg in IK, and this is very similar to the setup for Man Candy 1.0, where we had IK legs that did not stretch. So this is more like a normal person's leg with some controls for the angles of the foot and for the location of the foot. Um, and the leg does not stretch, it just stays at its maximum extension if you go too far, either by moving the foot too far or by moving the torso too far. Well, that was all well and good, but uh, for Man Candy 2.0, I decided to make him a little bit more cartoony, and I thought it would be nice if his legs could stretch, at least for a reasonable distance. And the first pass approach for that was simply to enable that in the IK chain. So if you go back and look at our, our IK bones over here, we have the thigh and the calf. And if you look more closely at the uh, armature bone settings, you'll see that there's a number here for stretch, and that's set to zero. Now that number uh, reflects the amount that the IK joint will, the IK bone will try to stretch to reach its target. Um, so it's not exactly uh, a limit on how much it stretches so much as it, what its inclination is to do. So if you set it really high, it'll stretch more than it'll rotate, which is not what you want. But if you set it a little bit higher than zero, then when it can't rotate at all to reach its target, then it will try to stretch. And so I basically entered the lowest possible number in here. I just put a one instead of the zero in the least significant spot and another one here there we go and that seemed to do it and I thought well okay here we go we have these stretchy bones and now we can stretch a leg and so I grabbed the foot and moved it and uh, whoops what's going on here well first thing is this isn't stretching I didn't set this to one So we'll do that. There we go. So that is stretching now. But the other problem is that they're both scaling equally in all directions instead of um, stopping and scaling only in the length direction. And indeed, if you think about it, as you are stretching the bone, what you really would want for it is not just simply just to scale, but also to um, get skinnier actually rather than fatter as it got longer and also if you were to squish it it should get fatter you notice right here that I can't even squash it yet so I need some control over the knee for those cases where I want the leg to squash rather than bend over here and I don't have that control yet so the solution I thought would be to separate the IK chain from the bones that actually control the leg. And so what I would do would, would be to create a, a alternate IK chain that mimics the, the, the thigh and calf bone. And then I would constrain the thigh and calf to stretch to the relevant points along that chain. And furthermore, for the middle of the chain, I'd create a bone that let you um, manipulate where that stretch was at the knee directly. So let's do that. So for starters, we'll just create that IK chain. So if you go back to where our bones are, we can select our geometry bones, go into edit mode, and simply duplicate them. And since we are in B-bone mode, we can hit Alt-S and make these fatter. And now we can at least distinguish the two from each other by the thickness. Otherwise, they would lie on top of each other and be totally confusing. And if I can find a layer which has no bones on it, I can move these two bones there temporarily so that um, I'll just do it here. Pink and and that way we can hide and unhide each one of these bones separately. And let's name them something a little bit more intuitive than thigh.l.001 and calf.l.001. 
uh, and I'll call them thiik.l and cathik.l. The nice thing about this is since that we're always animating the legs in IK, the animator never actually set keys on these bones, so you're free to change their names willy-nilly since they're not really part of the control setup for the legs. So we get out of edit mode, and these are children of each other, so we basically need that same IK constraint that's on this bone on this one, and there's a really handy way of doing that is basically to uh, click this bone and then shift click on the one that has the constraint on it right here and then do control C and copy all the constraints over Bingo. there it is and we definitely want the stretch on these so let's make sure that's that's in for our new bones. Fairly stretching. And we don't want the stretch on these bones. So we'll clear that. In fact, it doesn't really matter because we're not going to have an IK constraint on these bones at all in the end. So right now we can verify that um, that both our chains work the same way simply by grabbing the foot and moving it and seeing that they behave pretty much in the same way except when we stretch then our new chain keeps on going while the old one stays in place and so now we'll go to the next step